and to strengthen this new Christian tradition, Constantine held a famous ecumenical gathering known as the Council of Nicaea. And at this council, the many sects of Christianity debated and uh, voted on, well, uh, everything from the acceptance and rejection of specific Gospels to the date for Easter, to the ministry of the sacrament, and of course, the immortality of Jesus. It almost, almost makes a Christian head want to crack open when you hear the assaults and the accusations on the internet because they're simply not informed. They haven't really taken the time to dive, well, frankly, even into the water of Christian history to come up with their accusations. Hey, the Bible's a mess, man. Seven reasons why we can debunk the accusation the Bible didn't exist until 325 at the Council of Nicaea. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, the New Testament canon was not decided by any church council. You're not right about this. A council did not determine which books belong in the New Testament. How did it go down from core Christianity? The councils merely declared the way things had already been since the time of the apostles. Thus, these councils did not create, authorize, or determine the canon. They simply were a part of the process of recognizing a canon that already existed. Time is required for history to take place. In the first century, we see lists of books that the early church said, thumbs up, those books, they're reliable. Why? Because of their sources. They were either apostles or a disciple of an apostle who was an eyewitness to the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The early church council didn't go looking around the Mediterranean to try to find some books that they could put together to oppress people. No. They took a look. Here's the ones that we've always believed, but there are some interlopers. There are some that are vying for our attention. We got to study those. And so they did. They studied them and they determined, please don't make it this early list. This is the right list. The next time somebody tells you uh, that the Bible really wasn't compiled to the fourth century, you can help them out with their historical math. Number two, uh, early Christians believed that canonical books were self-authenticating. Apostles and prophets, my understanding is they were foundational for the early church. They gave the, the revelation that we have in our New Testament. And so we don't have apostles and prophets in the same way that they did when Paul wrote this. This is really important. The word apostle is crucial in our understanding and our support of the thesis statement that the Bible is an inspired book by God through men. The people who wrote the books of the Bible were not people who had no idea what Jesus looked like. The apostles saw him. They heard him. They were with him for three years and they saw these events unfold and they wrote it down or they taught a disciple exactly what Jesus said and they wrote it down. We don't have like seventh generation sources writing books in the Bible. No, we have apostles and disciples of apostles from core Christianity. The New Testament canon we possess is not due to the collusions of church leaders or the political authority of Constantine, but to the unique voice and tone possessed by these writings. Wait, what? There was a tone that determined which books are in the Bible? Yes. Yes, there is. You know this tone. You know it. When you read the Bible, it just feels different than any other genre of literature or any other book in a library. It has a voice, and it's a harmonious voice singing as a chorus one song about Jesus Christ. And the early church simply took a look at these books 
they determined which books sound like they might have apostolic authority, and they simply codified what was already believed to be the New Testament canon. Number three, the New Testament books are the earliest and best Christian writings we have. The Bible is the single most authenticated book in antiquity. There just isn't a debate. So when people make the accusation, well, the Bible, it wasn't really brought together until 325, they simply never studied textual criticism from core Christianity, the New Testament, was completed in the first century. This means the writings include testimonies from eyewitnesses and were written within 50 years of the events. That's a short amount of time, which cannot be said of any of the apocryphal literature often discussed in the news. With all due respect to Dan Brown and his Da Vinci Code, the apocryphal books were written too late to be qualified as actual inspired scripture. Timing is everything, and I know we hear 50 years, woof, that seems like a long time, but we're talking about eyewitnesses still alive. We're talking about people who saw it. How many years away are we from the Kennedy assassination? Actually, We've got more time than we had for the books that were written that are contained in our Bible. And yet, we certainly would say that somebody who was in Dallas uh, was a pretty reliable, you know, eyewitness. And if they wrote it down today, it would probably sell like hotcakes because people would have confidence the guy knew what he was talking about number four. The New Testament books come to us directly from apostolic testimony, core Christianity writes. Unlike any book from the period or the following century, the New Testament books were directly connected to the apostles, and their testimony of the resurrected Christ the canon is intimately connected to their activities and influence. The apostles had the very authority of Christ himself. It was Jesus Christ who told the disciples, you are given all authority that he has. They saw him and he promised them, I'm going to help you remember these things. And therefore, what we see in the New Testament is not a group of guys who got together to formulate some conspiracy theory but they were doing what they were told and they were given the authority to do so by Jesus Christ. In the New Testament church, there is content that is proclaimed that Christ is the Son of God, that He is the Savior, that He has died for your sins, that He has rose from the dead, and the, and the apostles preached that and, and called people to believe it. The New Testament writers quote other New Testament writers as scripture, the people who wrote the books that are in our canon would affirm that the other guys writing those books were actually writing divinely inspired scripture from core Christianity. In 2 Peter 3, Peter refers to Paul's letters as scripture. Uh-oh. Which would have to put them on a par with the books of the Old Testament. This is a significant fact that is often overlooked. Peter who was an eyewitness to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, said that Paul, this fellow who spent time with Jesus post-resurrection, was actually inspired by God to write down the things that he was taught. Early Christians used non-canonical writings without analogous authority. The interlopers, the apocryphal books, the pseudepigraphal books, they, they could not make the claim uh, this was written by an apostle or a disciple of, a, of an apostle. But the books you have in your New Testament canon can make that claim because, well, they were written by an apostle or a disciple of an apostle. Finally, from core Christianity, the New Testament documents are the best ancient manuscript tradition we have and were reliably chosen. Aristotle, Plato, Herodotus, Tacitus, 
None of them have the number of manuscripts the New Testament does. How many manuscripts do we have in Greek? 6,000, give or take. The number just keeps growing and growing. The only other book in antiquity that could even make a claim to coming close to the number of manuscripts the New Testament has is Homer and his Iliad, which has 2,000 copies. Now, I'm not good at math, but it seems to me uh, the New Testament with 6,000 has three times more. And yet, nobody doubts that Homer's Iliad was written by somebody else, or that he didn't actually pen the words that we have 2,000 years later, but they do with the New Testament. Why? It is not because of our ability to defend the dating, the number of manuscripts, the apostolic authority of the New Testament. They kick against the goads because it's God's word. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. For all of you Arminian passengers, you might think you have free will, but not on this flight. So let's put those seats in their upright and locked positions. And for all of my Calvinist passengers who believe in the sovereignty of God, he may ordain that you're going to crash today. But if you do, you're going to do it with your seatbelts on. So let's just buckle up. 